new SPC upper control arms, new Icon extended travel coilovers with the 700 pound spring, and new OEM lower ball joints all in one video. Howdy y'all, this is Josh at firstgenoffroad.com. Do me a favor and like this video. If you subscribe, you'll get every video I make. And feel free to leave a comment. I try to respond to every single one. Um, so now that I have my new Brute Force Fat Bumper, it's added about 150 pounds to the front end of this truck. And my old original springs with over 200,000 miles on them just aren't cutting it anymore. So I'm using this opportunity to switch out. So today we're going to install some new Icon coilovers. These are extended travel coilovers and they have uh, normally these would come with a 650 pound spring, but we've got a 700 pound spring because of the front bumper. So we're going to do these. Uh, these are available on my website, firstgenoffroad.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, <clears throat> and so because we're going to get a little added lift out of it, and because I want more down travel, we're also going to add new SPC upper control arms. Uh, these are fully greasable and they come with a ball joint that is also greasable. So I'll show you how to do that. And this will help with alignment. Um, it'll also help with extended down travel so you can get full use out of these springs. And uh, this is also available on the website. I'll give a link in the, in the description below. And then while I'm down here, while I've got everything torn out, I'm gonna replace the lower ball joint with an OEM lower ball joint. Um, these have a tendency to fail on our trucks, and sometimes the first sign or symptom of a faulty lower ball joint is when your wheel falls off when you're going down the road. So I don't want to risk that. I don't know if they've ever been changed, and they're so easy to do and not that expensive. While I'm out doing the work, I'm just going to go ahead and take care of this. So um, you can get this on Amazon. I'll give you an Amazon link in the description below. This job's not very hard. It's actually pretty easy as long as you have the right tools. I had most of them uh, and some of them I had to borrow from my local auto parts store. But we'll talk about those um, as we go. The first thing I like to do before I even jack up the truck or take the wheel off is go under the truck. and remove this sway bar link. You're gonna need it to come off and it's best to do it while the truck is on the ground. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that this uh, tie rod end is probably six months old, maybe eight months old, but uh, you can see how rusted it already is. The one on my first gen Tundra is original and it looks pristine, but I got this at Rock Auto. I'm not trying to bash Rock Auto, that's not what I'm doing, but I'm just saying um, make sure you know what you're getting when you're shopping at a place like I forgot the brand of this I wish I knew but I would always shop high-quality stuff for this kind of thing and that, if that means you need to pay a little more then so be it this isn't a game changer but it's just kind of disappointing that it's already rusted but anyway first step take this sway bar link off ball joint nut there two nuts on each side one two one two and then a nut that connects the, the outer tie rod the first thing we're gonna do is release this 
nut that connects the outer tie rod so we can move this a little easier. And to do that, we need to take this little pin out, this little cotter pin. This takes a 19. So we're going to have to take off that outer tie rod and how you do that is by checking out this kit from your local auto parts store. And um, what we'll do is, I think this is the one that fits, I'll show you how it works. Nineteen. So this thing is, this little cotter pin is so rusted, I'm going to try to take it out, but honestly it's probably, I'm probably just going to have to cut it, and uh, so don't judge me if I am not able to get this thing out. So now we got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts out. It's time to take this uh, this lower ball joint off. Now we've got all six bolts off our lower ball joint. We need to get some distance between this and our, our lower ball joint. So what we'll do is connect a couple of lugs and just using a two by four you know, spare piece of lumber just jack up on these lugs. And so then we'll go back to our little rented tool from the auto parts store. And there we go. Comes out with a little pop. It can be startling, but that's normal. lower ball joints out so here's our old lower ball joint and I don't I, again I don't know if it's ever been changed or not it looks actually with the rust on it looks like it's probably original or at least it's pretty old and again because he's with they fail they fail big time here's our new one <clears throat> and you know you just want to make sure that it looks the same it also comes with another nut and a cotter pin The four bolts that go here, we're going to reuse those and <clears throat> I'm going to add a little bit of red Loctite. Um, this is uh, this is red, thread lock or red, it comes in a blue bottle but I would use the red stuff. And it doesn't really take a whole lot. That's probably too much. So now we want to torque all of these down to 61 foot-pounds. So 
So then we can take our new nut here, is torqued to 103 pounds. Once that is torqued, we'll just add the new cotter pin. And then we're gonna reuse this nut and we torque it down to 46 pounds. So <clears throat> our kit doesn't come with a, a new cotter pin, so we need to add one. So here we are under the truck and uh, we have our new our new lower ball joint in there so that looks good now we have to take off this shock here and up there I think this is the really cool part of this. We've gotten this nut off and we've gotten these nuts off too. So that means that this shock is almost ready to come out. But the only thing we have left to do is punch this bolt out. But when you punch this bolt out, it's gonna run into this axle right here. So normally I would just kind of squeeze it through, but I, I don't want to risk damaging the axle. So this is actually a great time and it's really easy to get this out if we do one thing and since we're gonna take this upper control arm off anyway, now's a great time to just take this bolt out and take this spindle out. So, um, but when we do that, this whole wheel spindle is gonna shift this way, it's gonna wobble this way and back and forth in every which way, and this axle, even you risk pulling that out. So in order to prevent that, we're going to first take off this uh, ABS line right here, this, and uh, which, you know, there's a bolt there, uh, there's a bolt there and there's a bolt there um, and then we're gonna take a bungee or something and and adhere it to this part of the frame so that way it's stable we're not gonna have to fight with it but it'll still drop it enough to where we can get this bolt out with no problem and not have to fight with the axle All there have this bungee or whatever you're going to use ready to go because you're not going to want to leave this for very long See if we can get that bolt out now. People on streets. So before I do anything else, I just like to put these together so I don't so I don't lose anything. Alright, so 
Here's my old shock. And, uh, you know, the Bilstein shock, which I'm going to reuse, and I have uh, a plan for this, which I'll share with you guys at the end. It was my original OEM spring with 208,000 miles on it. So this is what I've taken out. And here's my new, here's my new shock. So these Icon coilovers are sort of, they're kind of upside down. I don't know if you guys can appreciate that. So, but a lot more spring, right? A lot more spring. And uh, let's put this down. For a second. Um, how you know how to orient this is that this little gas port will always go on the outside. Also, there are two spacers, a short side and a long side. I don't know if you guys can appreciate that or not. The short side faces forward. So if you can imagine passenger side, short side faces forward, and the gas port faces the outside, so you can access it anytime you want. And the long side, the long spacer faces the rear. This comes with its mounting hardware here, but you have to reuse that bottom bolt. <laughs> Okay, so I've got the top just sort of loosely hand tightened. And now what I'm gonna try to do is twist this, orient it so I can get this installed. So I'll take out these zip ties that come with it. And I'm gonna use a little screwdriver to just kinda twist this to where I think it'll fit a little better. So we got that bolt in, and let me tell you guys, that was not without lots of prayer and petition, but it's in, so let's go ahead and tighten it down. All right, so now we're gonna torque this to 98 pounds. So these top bolts, we're gonna torque at 30 foot pounds. Now we gotta get our new upper control arm in, which means we're taking this out and we're taking out this ball joint. So first thing I'm gonna do is take this out. But you wanna rent a kit like this. And actually, I don't like this kit, but it was the only one they had and I'm going to make it work. So let's start by peeling back this, this boot there. So we got that off. Get some of this Gorilla Goop out. Let's see what we're doing a little better. Alright, so here's our ball joint and we've taken the boot off. We've kind of wiped it down. There's a ring right here that we need to take out now before we press this ball joint out. So these are snap ring pliers and you use them to get the snap ring out so and I don't know if you could do this job without it so basically you find that little groove and I believe it's right yeah it's right there you put your snap ring pliers in there and you just kind of open it up seen it where some people will take a five pound hammer and just blow on it like that but 
man I've never had any luck with that so or a three pound hammer or whatever so I'm gonna get a, a ball joint press so our ball joint is kind of stuck I put some penetrating oil on it and we're gonna let that sit for a little bit and then I'll try and press it out but it's it's got some rust on it and I'm just gonna see what this penetrating oil does but um, so while we're waiting I'm gonna go ahead and take this upper control arm out there's a, a nut here a bolt that goes all the way through and there's a two washers on either side you're gonna keep the nut and bolt but you're gonna ditch those washers because we'll, we'll we have some new ones with our SBC kit So now we have to insert some bushings here and it comes with some grease to do it. They go in from the outside. You don't have to worry about greasing the inside but you want to grease the middle and, and you want to grease the outside of the bushing here. So I grease the one end, grease the middle, press it in, and then I use my little tap hammer and just kind of push it the rest of the way in. So that's one side. Alright, that's that. Alright, so now we're gonna put this control arm, we got the bushings in, we're gonna put the control arm back in. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna put it, when you put the control arm in, this, this divot goes on top and it kind of points towards the back wheel there. Somebody better put your bag into 
with a 19 millimeter and we're going to torque to 85 pounds. And so unlike the old upper control arm, this one will be able to get lots of movement. my dues time after time I've done my sentence but committed no crime and bad mistakes I've made a few I've had my share So now that we've got our old ball joint out and we actually pressed it out this way, it would make sense that this is our new adapter it and this needs to go here. It would make sense that this would go this way, but that would make it upside down. So according to SPC, they want it to go in this way. So we pushed the old one out this way and we're going to push the new one in this way. Um, I've had this in the freezer and I'm about to go put it back in the freezer because this is a tight squeeze. So what I'm going to do is I've got this in the freezer and I'm going to get a torch and heat this up and then we're going to press this. And this is maybe the most difficult part. I would definitely have a press. So again, we push this in down, and I don't have the exact fit I want for the ball joint, but I'm going to make this work. So here's that adapter all pressed in. You can see that there's really no space left here. And there's a little groove there where we're gonna put our little snap ring. All right, so now it's time to put our snap ring in. And how I do this is I get a pair of vice grips and I put the ring in place, kind of like this. And using my vice grips, I just kind of lock it into place. So then you just want to make sure that's clipped in all the way around. And it looks like it is, and so we're there. I don't really have any clips, so we're just going to zip tie these. You brought me fame and fortune and everything that goes with it. I thank you all. But it's been no bed of roses. No so now it's time to put this our new ball joint in, and this is a greasable ball joint. It's got a dessert little grease fitting here. Um, so we'll 
unbolt this, put it right in here. And we're not going to bolt it down too tightly right now because we still may need to move it a little bit. But let's go ahead and put that bolt in place or that nut in place rather so we don't mess it up. And then I forgot to record this, but you torque this to 45 foot pounds. You put the cotter pin in. Whoops. So now it's time to grease this ball joint and you want to use, the instructions say to use NLGI number two grade LB. So, and it also says that six to 10 pumps is adequate. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it actually 10. We'll see how it goes. That feels better actually. So that feels good. So I'm gonna set the camber all the way towards the upper control arm. And I'm just gonna torque down on that. And then it needs to be, when you finally have the caster and camber the way you want it, you should torque this down to 150 uh, foot pounds. So now we can put the brake lines back on. So let's look and see what we did. So, so we have the new Icon coilovers with the 700 pound spring to support our brute force fab bumper. We have our new SPC upper control arm. It's, it's fully greasable here and here. Uh, we have new LBJs there. These are our OEM. We did a line on Monday. We'll see how it drives, but uh, I'm excited. These things are beefy and it sits a little higher now than it used to. Not really sure how much higher. I can get a measurement here in a second. So with my old Bilsteins, my Bilstein 5100s and my original factory springs from the center of the wheel to the uh, fender, I was about 21 and a quarter maybe 21 and a half we're about 21 and a half so i didn't i didn't try to give it a lift but it does sit about a quarter inch higher and i think the bottom line is it's going to handle this impact a whole lot better so i can't wait to get it aligned and we'll see how it drives all right so just got it back from the alignment shop and it's driving awesome it feels like a new pair of shoes super cushy so when you get it aligned where you want it you're supposed to take this nut and torque it down to 150 foot pounds and they probably did it at the alignment shop but i don't exactly trust them so before it slips and gets out of the line i'm going to go ahead and torque this down to 150 foot pounds i'll do it on both sides so i've got my torque wrench set to 150 foot pounds awesome All right, so now, so now I've got my new shocks in, my new upper control arms in. We got new lower ball joints, and now I have two of these. So one and two. Uh, the springs are pretty much toast. They have over two hundred thousand miles on them. The shocks are still good. They have only about eight thousand miles on them. So I want to uh, show you what I'm going to do with these shocks now that I have them off the Sequoia. So this is what I'm gonna do with my old Bilsteins. I'm gonna put them on this thing. This is my new, to me, 2004 Toyota Tundra double cab, four wheel drive. I just picked this thing up. I don't even wanna say how much I paid for it. 
I got a steel on it. Uh, it's got a lot of cool, cool things. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you about the things that it doesn't have. It, it's got a few cosmetic things, right? That little bumper flares missing. It's got this cool brush guard, but uh, it, he's the previous owner said he hit a wild pig, and so it's dented there, but, man, not a big deal. I mean, it's got some little scuffs here and there. It's been used, man. It's been used outside. It's got a little... I don't know what this is, bullet hole, I don't know what this is, a hole in the fender flare there. But overall, man, pretty good shape, and I like the color too. It's got these big 35-inch wheels. These are 305 7018s, Toyo Open Countries. I don't know what kind of wheel that is, but it's on spacers. I don't know if you can see that, which I'm not crazy about spacers, but for right now, that's what I've got. Um, it's got this... Let's see, it's got this, uh, this, I'm not sure what kind of lift this is. I don't know if it's an RCV lift or a Tough Country. Or you see that drop-down bracket there. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, man, it's only got 165,000 miles on it. Not even that, 164 and change, but um, starts right up. Let's see if I can start it up. awesome um it's got just the button touch four-wheel drive uh four-wheel high and low ac heat works great it's got am fm cd and cassette y'all and it's got also an xm which is great all the windows work including the one that goes all the way down it's great Uh, it's got a spray-in bed liner. It's got a toolbox. Let's see. It's got a uh, a limited slip back there. It's on blocks and it's got airbags. Let's see if we can see the airbags a little better. Airbags. Here are the airports. There. Yeah, it's missing a lock, so maybe I'll get that so I don't have to buy it back off Craigslist one day. Um, so a couple things are wrong with it. One is that I'm getting a little bit of chatter out of the limited slip, not when it's cold. And I've only been able to make it do it once, but if it's really, if I've been driving it for over an hour and then I park and then I put it in reverse and pull out of the park or pull out of the parking spot, I'll hear a little chatter, but it goes away after a little bit. So I'm gonna try and just change the gear oil and see if that makes a difference. My feeling, my, my suspicion is that they just didn't use the correct gear oil in it. And then the other thing it's got, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn off this engine so you can hear me a little better. The other thing it's got is um, some old bill stains. probably came with the dang thing, but <laughs> I don't know if you can appreciate that. The bushing is just gone. So no time like the present. I'm going to replace that with my Bilsteins and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to make lots of videos with this truck. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it, but for right now, the Bilsteins are the way to go. There's the spacer, the old factory upper control arms. I'm not a big fan of spacers, but I do like this truck. Anyway, it runs great, which means I got too many dang trucks now. I mean, I have this one, the Sequoia, and then I have my baby, which I don't know. Is it wrong for a man to love another truck? Because I love that truck, but I think I might have to sell it. I don't really want to, but dang. Anyway, I just can't keep collecting these things, you know? So anyway, y'all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do me a favor and like this video, subscribe. Everything that I did is for sale on my website or on Amazon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys out there.